Hi, this is Grace Francisco, Vice President of Developer Relations Strategy and Experience at Cisco. We're here at Cisco Live in the DevNet Zone. Super excited to be here today. And I have here with me Tony Colon. Uh, Tony Colon, tell us what your role is at Cisco. Thank you, Grace. Uh, my role here at Cisco is I lead the Customer and Partner Experience team. And we're really focused on simplifying the customer and the partner's experience. I've been at Cisco three years. I'm loving every minute of it. And I'm super excited to be here with you, Grace. Great, well I'm super excited that you're here as well. I met Tony Colon when I started about a year ago here at Cisco and I have to say, you know, when I joined, I spoke with Chuck and Fran and I was like, you know, Chuck, Fran, I've heard about the Cisco culture. Is this for real? And I had a great conversation with them and I was super happy to join. And when I met Tony, I thought, oh yeah, this is for real. Tony's been a great ally. He was super helpful in my onboarding process. And I just want to say, you know, I'd love to talk about um, how you have been approaching diversity within your group. How do you foster and nurture that in your teams? So I will say, I mean, you look at this conference that we're at, it's primarily men. Uh, and and it's, it's, a, it's been a challenging industry for since I've started in this space, I'm sure when you started in your career. And, you know, it's just been a passion of mine because to me, software is the ultimate sort of democratization of, of software and technology. And so with that, the only way you build good software is having diversity. I truly, truly believe that, and it's not just diverse thoughts, but also diverse, you know, um, in race, in, in every single aspect of diversity. So it's been a passion of mine, and it's really been a, a monumental shift from, I would say, where we started to where we're at right now. Fantastic. There's a, been a, a lot of progress when it comes to diversity in tech. We still have a ways to go. And the thing is, diversity is great for business. We all know this. There's been a ton of research that's been done that diverse teams, empowered teams, really get to better decision making. There's been a ton of research on this. In fact, there was a research report that was done with financial analysts, and they always came back with a better estimates when they had a diverse team coming up with those estimates. So this is important, this has been a, a passion of mine as well for my entire career. Um, when I think about some of the challenges that people have talked about with creating diverse teams, it's, it's about the hiring process. And you know, I always encourage people to find different ways, not traditional ways of hiring. And I know this is something that you push for as well. Tell me a bit about your process around this. So one of the things that we did to start with was first look at who's doing the interviews. Because if you want to find diverse talent, you have to make sure that your interview panels are inherently diverse. So that was a shift because typically we're like, oh, the same people doing the same hiring, the engineering managers. So you sort of have a what people call a pipeline problem. You're not mm -hmm. getting enough people in mm -hmm. that are diverse to then find the right candidates. So that was one thing that we did. So we, we really changed the interview panels, who does interviews. And really a unique thing that we've done is we have someone that the interview is just about culture. And we have this thing on our team where we don't say it's not just about cultural fit, mm -hmm. but cultural add. So what are they adding to the team? What is the dynamic, right? You don't want someone who sort of has a, a me versus we mentality. Yeah. And then when it comes to finding the talent and the recruiting, we all know, I mean, now Ford is competing for software talent and you know all these companies now want the software talent. And so they're really trying to focus on where do we find these individuals and these sort of sort of diamonds in the rough, you may call it. And one of the things we've done is partnered with non-traditional companies and non-traditional four-year degrees. So there's a company called BloomTech, and what they do, they're a nonprofit, is basically they focus on getting individuals into their pipeline and then sort of, it's kind of a pay it forward mentality mm -hmm. where they actually bring other folks in that have gone through the program and so just finding different ways and different avenues that are not always a four-year degree, you know, people who are in the trade. And uh, I found that people who are just passionate and hardworking can literally do anything. Absolutely. I was super thrilled when uh, Liz, uh, my boss, asked me to fill in for her for a uh, conference, which was a returnship conference. And I was thrilled to hear that we're actually partnering with Women Back to Work, an organization that we're partnering with on our own returnship program. 
Uh, and I got to speak with this, this group and it's, it's lovely because there's been a ton of uh, women, just in general, it's something like 50, 55% of women mid-career leave tech and they don't come back. And in the pandemic, it was so much worse. There was a huge departure of women, professional women leaving in, during the pandemic. And so even um, our, our president, President Biden, during one of his State of Unions had this remark about, we really got to bring women back to work. It's so very important to diversity across the industry. Uh, and so I was so really proud to be at this conference representing Cisco and our partnership with the Women Back to Work organization. Have you had any experiences with this program that we have? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's incredible. I I didn't know that. So the first time I found out about the program, I was in India uh, three years okay. ago, and it is one of the largest employee resource organizations at Cisco. Mm -hmm. And it was just sort of fascinating because you know culturally in India, it was you know the woman goes and and once they have children, then they they sort of. Uh, typically or traditionally stayed at home and what how do you break sort of the stigma and sort of that that traditional which is you know how people were raised I would say the way I grew up it was very similar um, and it was it's how do you break that sort of con continued path down when when someone has children a woman has children they stay at home and the, mm -hmm. the the other typically works and so I found it fascinating and I think one of the things that was just a just listening to what are the things, you know, people thought with the pandemic, oh, you can work from home, then it might be easier, but it's actually harder. It is. Because then the kids are in the home, you know, you've got, you know, had to be teacher and mother and everything else. And then the other interesting thing is there were no part-time positions on my team, mm. which was one of the biggest asks from the returnship program is, can we have a part-time role? And I, I opened up not, not a a ton at the time and now we're saying wait wait a minute like you know is it part-time but you're actually working full-time mm -hmm. like no it's actually this is part-time work let me choose my own hours and more flexible work times mm -hmm. and that's really been a win for us both for for the employee but also for Cisco and just being more flexible that's awesome to hear I love what you're doing and how you're really thinking outside of the box and doing things more creatively to really be yeah, inclusive as a leader and creating inclusive and diverse teams. So proud to be working with people like you. Thank you so much for your time here at Cisco Live and, and for participating in this. Um, and looking forward to continuing our partnership together and building diverse teams at Cisco. Thank you, Grace. Thank you to the DevNet community and team and uh, just exciting to be here and it's so happy that you're at Cisco. Thank you. Thanks, team.